Here is a nice problem. We have limit n tends to infinity 1 by n q and sigma of k equal to 1 to n k square x. k equal to 1 to n and n is tending to infinity. Right. So, uh, basically k is also tending to infinity. We have greatest tensor function of k square x. What is the sigma? The sigma is something like uh, greatest integer function of x and this is 1 square x plus 2 square x greatest integer function again 3 square x plus likewise up to infinity 1 by n cube of this entire thing. This is the given question. Right. Now obviously when x is an integer let us say x is 2, 4, 30 or whatsoever Obviously, 1 square x will also be an integer, 2 square x will also be an integer, all of these are integers. When x is an integer, this entire expression will become 1 by n cube into uh, 1 square x plus 2 square x plus 3 square x, etc, etc. Okay, because everything is an integer, when it is an integer, greatest integer function is actually equal to that integer. So, which is nothing but x into 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to like this by n cube, right, which is which is like this. Now, let us take the case when x is not an integer, let us say x is some root 2, okay, x is some irrational number, then this k square x, k square x, for example, 2 square root 2, greatest integer function of 2 square root 2 will be lesser than 2 square root 2, at the same time, it will be greater than 2 square root 2 minus 1. Right, because this one is some number, right. This one is what is that number? 4 into 1.4, some number it is. Right, this will always be greatest integer function of this will always be lesser than, will always be lesser than this number, right. 4 into 1.4, but it will always be greater than one number below this, right. Greatest integer function of this 4 into 1.4 will be greater than 4 into 1.4 minus 1, right. Because it should lie between these two, right. For example, if it is 2.5, 2.5 greatest integer function of 2.5 is actually 2. This 2 should, uh, so two, this 2 is actually lesser than 2.5 and greater than 1.5. This is what we are trying to say, right. Now, when x is, let us say, some irrational number, this expression will become, this expression, this one, this entire expression will always be greater than what? 1 by n cube times 1 square x minus 1 plus 2 square x minus 1, 3 square x minus 1, likewise, likewise up to infinity. So, this this summation or this entire limit, this 1 by n cube of uh, m times this thing will always be greater than this one and uh, will always be greater than or equal to this one. When x is a irrational number, we realize this will always be greater than this one. And at the same time, when x is an integer, this will be equal to this one or otherwise it will always be obviously lesser than this one, right. So, it will be lesser than 1 by n cube into 1 square x plus 2 square x plus 3 square x plus 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 up to infinity and greater than again 1 by n cube into 1 square x plus 2 square x plus 3 square x plus minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 up to up the how many ones? There will be n ones, right. So, what we are saying this function, this one, this summation will always be lesser than x into x into this one, 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square, which is not nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2 and n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6, right, sum of squares of first n natural numbers, n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6 minus n, right, minus 1, x into all of this minus n, right, x into 1 square, x into 2 square, x into 3 square minus n. So, this, 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 this expression, this expression will always be greater than this, greater than or equal to this and lesser than what? Lesser than x into 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to, up to n square, right. Because when, when x is an integer, this will be equal to this, otherwise it will be lesser than or equal to this. What does that mean? x into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 6, right. So, basically this, this summation, the summation will always lie between this value and this value. Now, we want 1 by n cube of this summation. 1 by n cube of summation, obviously, if we do 1 by n cube, 
this becomes six n cube minus n by n cube, which is minus one by n square. Um, this becomes six n cube again, right? This this part will again lie between these two items, right? Now, see, we can see this clearly. This part and uh, this part, right? This part and this part, we we can we can uh, we can see the limit also because there are three n's here and three n's in the numerator also. This will get cancelled, right? We can write it as um, one plus one by n into two plus one by n, right? Minus one by n square. We are cancelling this n cube here. One n will get cancelled. X into this one, right? So now this is lesser than this versus and lesser than the, again the same expression without minus one by n square. Now when limit n tends to infinity, this part will be zero. This part will be zero. This part will be zero. This will be zero. This will be zero. What will be left? We'll be left with x by six into one plus two, which is sorry one into two, which is nothing but x by three. So what we are saying, this limit, this limit is always less than or equal to this one and greater than or equal to this one. But both of these limits are turning out to be x by 3. So, by sandwich theorem, this is always less than or equal to x by 3, it is always greater than or equal to x by 3 when n tends to infinity. So, obviously, the limit should be x by 3. So, essentially, what we are saying, what is this problem saying? This problem, though it looks, uh, it looks so cumbersome, so essentially, what we are saying is, when k is going very big, right, when k is going very big, then, so for example, 100 square into x, Versus, versus 100 square x greater than the function of x. When the number is so big, then decimal part doesn't matter. That's what we are trying to say. Right. When k is becoming big and bigger and bigger, right, then 100 square into x and the whatever is, if there is some decimal part left, the decimal part is very insignificant with respect to the overall one. That is what we are we are trying to we are trying to say the sigma of all this one is actually equal to sigma of uh, the function without this greatest integer function because as k, k is going bigger and bigger whatever x it might be right there will be a small um, sm small fractional part that might be left out but that fractional part is actually very very insignificant because we are adding these terms after a point the fractional parts they don't matter but in the beginning, if the if n is small, then fraction parts might add some weightage. But if n is very big, right? Then the fraction parts actually don't add anything. Right? The difference between this with a step function and without step function is only the fraction part. That fraction part adds nothing when n is become very big. That is the important thing to notice here. Another thing we discussed about uh, the rational functions, rational functions and horizontal asymptotes. Right here, n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6, sorry, by n 6n cube. Right, this is a rational function, right? This is a polynomial. This also is a polynomial, ratio of two polynomials. Right, and both degree 3, right? Highest power of n is actually 3. So, when both polynomials are of the same, highest degree is same, then what is the horizontal asymptote? Horizontal asymptote is coefficient of this highest power, right? In the numerator, the coefficient is 1 into 1 into 2, which is 2, and the denominator, the coefficient is 6. So, it is 1 by 3. There is an x here also. So, it should be x by 3, right? The, the, as per the result of, results of or theory of uh, theorem of horizontal asymptotes, when it is a rational function, then uh, it will have a horizontal asymptote, which should be equal to the co ratio of coefficients of its highest power, when highest powers are equal, right? Obviously, when uh, a lower power is higher than, so for example, it, it comes out to be n squared by n power 4, then horizontal axis axis, that is, uh, x axis is the asymptote. If it comes out like this, n power 4 by n power 2, when higher power is more than the uh, numerator highest power is greater than the denominator highest power, then uh, this will go to infinity, right? The numerator is clearly dominating a lot, so it will go to infinity, right? So, this we can directly say that uh, this is x by 3, or otherwise we can do it this way also. We can do it this way and say 1 by n tends to 0, that's why it is still x by 3, right? Yes. Hope you guys like this. Thank you. It's a very simple problem, just that it is made to look little 
uh, complex. Uh, the thing that we have to understand is when uh, when k becomes so big, then greatest integer function or greatest integer function will stop uh, becoming uh, significant. It becomes very insignificant because the fraction part is actually very small when compared with the actual value. Thank you, guys.